can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinion, so don't waste my time then. Killing the game, and I gotta go ask anybody. They all heard about it, they know when they're kidding, he's spitting it. No when he get in it, bit and I get in my way. Got this, I like to whatever I say, cause I can go put you on blast. People been mad at me, cause I don't follow them back. I'm laughing, cause that is so whack. Why they y'all trying to act like they've been bossing when really their bosses been bossing them up? Nobody ever been telling me what I would do when I keep in the cash, write the shit out of luck. I want them more now, I get what I wish. Upgrading now with some pants that I win. Making six figures, don't talk about it. Money and shit, it's about how you think. Tired of people who making excuses, then they complain about losing. Tell me about what you've been doing, tell me about how you've been moving. You ain't got nothing to prove then. I did it all on my own, they looking like all of my clones. I don't be following trends, fuck all the popular clothes. You faking and everyone knows. I just be keeping it real, they thinking that I have to go sign a deal. But really, the people just found an appeal. I'm in my own lane and I'm steering the wheel, ayy. Funny how it goes, funny how it goes Working every night till the sunrise We're back once again, no false finish, me and the Fletch, Shelbyville Heat. Yeah. And uh, off the backs of EBW's first ever inaugural show in XCW. And we're going in to the biggest show of the year, EBW's Backyard Bash. So, going into this show, this is the show that we were putting our stake in the ground. This biggest show of the year, bigger than Summer Mania. And it's right before Summer Mania. It's right so before it's like Summer a, Mania. It's just like a, hey, hey, I still be back, you know. This is what is important Shots to us. fired. And as we said last show, Gabe was the first inductee into the EBW Hall of Fame. And I had a great idea in between shooting these episodes that, since EBW is my brand, I'm going to induct you right now because I can. Fletch is the second member to join the EBW Hall of Fame. And he was an EBW wrestler as well as an XCW wrestler and it fits. You were involved in a whole bunch of big EBW things, with especially with me. We wrestled a lot in the original EBW. He's hardcore champion for like longer than everybody, which was only like thirty six seconds. Yeah, I remember. There's a fucking promo for it. <laughs> you were also involved in Knuckles and Big Timer Chase Jones being involved in XCW. Me and you had the first light bulb spot, the first light bulb spot ever down at Pearson School. Yeah, and then we did, you know. You were part of the EBW XCW storyline. So I see it fit to not declare you. 2021. EBW Hall of Fame. There you go. Every six years, we'll just put somebody else in it. I mean, there's no more EBW shows to talk about. Okay, yeah, you're right. So going into this show, biggest EBW show of the year. Gabe sticking his foot in the ground. And this is us saying we're super serious and like we're going to try to end everything when we get to summer Mania. And at this point, I feel like the people who are not, even some of the people that were internally involved with the storyline actually thought we were going to shut XW down and make it EBW. I think people legit thought we had built EBW up so much and done so many things and with me still being neutral, people legit thought, okay, like, this is it. EBW beats XCW. Like, people thought that. So what do you remember as you dive further into what was going on at this time? Um, well, behind the scenes, we knew for a fact that this was um, the beginning of the end for EBW. Um, so Mania was definitely going to be the, the conclusion to uh, this EBW venture. And, um, and initially we thought, man, is there a way that we could keep this going beyond Summer Mania because we were having so much fun with the with the scenario. But I mean at the time we're like, it's played out a year and a half. We had the situation we had the big situation with Gabe. And then Gabe also got um, a DUI at the time and, and Gabe lived pretty far from Shelbyville at yeah. the time. He lived about an hour, hour and a half away. Um, and so it was going to be an issue for him too. Um, you know, he's going to have to work more to shoot jobs so that he could, uh, accommodate his lawyer and his, you know, his 
his fees with his um, with his license, his license were going to be suspended. And then when he did was able to drive, he was going to have to do the breathalyzer to, to even start his vehicle and stuff because his blood alcohol level was so high. Yeah. Um, and I think he was leaving a wedding or something um, when, when he got in trouble. So ultimately, without Gabe, there's no EBW at that point. So unfortunately, we just had to make the tough call of, hey, like, Summer Man is it. We have to... Uh, we kept that hush hush. Like yeah. only like I think you, me, Emily, and genocide, and genocide, and like the referee didn't know until right before the match, and Corey Lee didn't know until right before the match. So we're just um, we on on that way to make that call. Like hey, uh, Gabe's going away, and uh, we don't have any other choice at this point. Like it could have been better timing. Yeah. But uh, we knew, hey, Gabe's going away, so we don't have a we don't have a leg to stand on here. Like EBW's coming to a close with Armenia. I think there we talked about it at a future point in time. I think it was maybe no, it was the EBW versus XCW feud. We I think we discussed about. It. I was going to say Q and A. We talked about potentially. I raised the question for you. I'm like, well. You were always the neutral party, you know. What if Fletch would have stepped up and been the owner of EBW? We could have carried out a little bit longer. But as you said... But in a way, that kind of did happen. Yeah. Because shortly after EBW closed its doors to Summer Mania, within a show or two, Royalty was in order. Yeah. And Royalty was controlled by myself and Emily, and the first member of Royalty was... Chris Jones. So, in a way... Um, without saying EVW, it was kind of, yeah, kind of made the same way. And like a lot of cool things stem from that. You had Grim Reefer winning a championship, which turned out to be James Cerebral. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we did uh, a long time ago for all the WWE fans out there. You remember when Vince McMahon originally brought in the NWO, he said he was going to Kill his own creation. Kill his own creation. Inject that poison. He's into, doing it now, but yeah, into W into WWE. Inject that poison. He brought an NWO. Well, Fletcher since we're doing the same, injecting that poison, which we would find out was me. I'd beat the piss out of genocide. Yeah. No, we brought in John Street, some max destruction. Yeah, I mean it was man. The royalty was cool too. It was a way to carry on the good times. Obviously, now we got the royalty as well. I'm still partial to the first one. <laughs> you say you've got yep. somebody. If you can't obey by the rules, then yes. Okay, obey by the rules, I mean, don't you realize who I am? I'm the original rule breaker around here. I've done whatever it took to get the top, but I am doing this for the fans. I've told you I'm doing it for them. Which, so you can bring whoever you want. Okay. <laughs> How do you like that one, huh? How do you like that, genocide? Get up, Chris! Get him! Get up, Chris! Get him, Chris! Get him, Chris. <laughs> I told you, Genocide, play by the rules, or I will make you. Right, so as we go to this show, we had one of the best opening intros I think you've ever done. And I mentioned that in the and YouTube took it all. Fuck you, YouTube. Yeah, eat shit, bitch. But uh, we had Jay-Z, the public service announcement being the show theme. And I believe it's really fitting for the show. Kicking off the show, Mitchell Maverick. Going one on one with an XCW Hall of Famer. You know who it was? Uh, was it DCC? Or was it LOL, really? It was LOL, the New Age Championship on the line. Mitchell Maverick would one up LOL and retain that New Age Championship. Oh, wow. Um, 
Well, we knew where we were going. We had, um, on the XW side of things, we had Joker, who was super hot. Um, just as hot as the whole EBW storyline was. On the XW side of things, Joker was hot. Um, at the time, Joker was doing this thing where he would, uh, he would imitate his favorite wrestlers from TV. And he'd come out as, um, you know, like Hulk Hogan or Ric Flair or even Val Venus. And, like, you see him joke, um, and all these different, um... Joke the Hitman Hart. Yeah, he was, him and Nell Lowe were the Bushwhackers and... So uh, Joker was was really into that, and we already had it made up that um, you know we were really starting to get deep into the Mitchell Maverick storyline of him being a drunk. So he's trying to fight all these masked characters and stuff, and his matches weren't taken as seriously as they probably should have. And and, and honestly, the, if even if you think about it now, like it's not like Mitchell Maverick was really that good in the ring, so. At least giving him a drug gimmick where he, if he fucks up, it's like, oh, it's okay, he's drunk. <laughs> and not to mention, it was kind of a, kind of a knock on Gabe. We're like, hey, you drunk? Well, we're just gonna put it on this guy. So, um, <clears throat> so it makes sense for me to put him with all the well, knowing that um, on the other side of the coin, super hot. We we're gonna have Mitchell Maverick go against Joker, who was, uh, <coughs> he, it was, he was. He was Joker Rose with his uh, Rose Buds, his Joke Buds, um, at Summer Mania, and he'd knock off Mitchell Maverick, and at the time, was the fastest match in Summer Mania history, because he, uh, Mitchell Maverick played to the to the camera and to the crowd and the announcing table, Joker would do the quick roll up one two three, and then Swap Man would arrest Mitchell Maverick. Adam Joker here. Oh. Hey, what the quick roll up? Two, three. <laughs> Sorry, hey, it's because I'm sober, all right. It's because he's sober. Adam Joker is your winner here tonight. The Joker Rose. Mitch Maverick actually came out in your entrance later in the show in handcuffs. Yeah, I remember. Fucking the shit we were able to come up with. Yeah. And that was. That was uh that was after Swap Man already arrested Grim Reefer and smacked him in the face. Good times. I fucking love Swap Man. So one more match before we go to the break. We're gonna talk about I'm pretty sure this is one of your favorites of the show. Not the best match of the show, but one of your favorites of the show. We had Matt Chincho, one of the Crusaders, which was, you know, standing by ringside the entire show along with, you know, the Gurky. The Tommy, the Corey Lee, the Hazard. Emily Moore, and the Hazard. Taking on my right hand man in EBW, James Cerebral. Matt Chimshel would defeat James Cerebral via DQ. Yeah, that was my fault. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, you knew that you could put these guys in the middle of the car and they're going to be able to have an awesome match. Um, many people. Don't like the fact that Street rolls in and out of the company, and um, it, it was different for James Hurd back then. Like, it was. He was the most dedicated wrestler I think XW has ever seen that wasn't within our core group. Um, and he was a major star. It made a big impact, a big splash in his time in XCW, and uh, um, so. Regardless of what people say, I think there's very, very few, if any, of um, James Cerebral's matches you could look at and say, that match sucked. I feel like James Cerebral is a player all the time. James Cerebral is one of the best in-ring wrestlers I think XW's ever had. He adapts to every situation, and you put him in there with Matt Chincho, who at the time was a major star. Um... Plus, it was setting up the heat between myself and Matt, which had been going back and forth between, you know, him dating my sister, and I painted his car and wrote Mexican yeah. on the hood, and I beat up his friend um, Esteban, and I, threw him, I was going to throw him back into the river because he crossed the border, yeah. and I, I 
they had Sika de Chincho and ate tacos that his mom made. You know, all these different things, these silly, you know, racial things that I was doing at the time. Plus, we were setting up the Side of Madness, which was the first ever yeah. in ECW. So, it was, uh, it was just kind of a way to give two major players a nod by putting them in uh, a situation where it really mattered. And it gave me the opportunity to make the attack on Matt Chinchel and... Plus, it just keep, continues to play to the side where you don't know whose side Flex is on. I'm attacking an XW guy, not an EBW guy. Yeah. And then ultimately, the EBW guy, James Struble, throws Matt Chinchel in a bunch of fucking corn, which actually hurt Matt really bad. And I mean, then it cut him up pretty good. So We're going to hold that thought right there. More when we come back. Come the XCW Crusaders riding in in style here. We got Matt Chenchel, Tommy the Man Miraman, Carnage, Emily Moore, Madman, James Gurky, Hazard, and Corey Lee all making their way down to the ring here. What is this? And they're all talking about money and bitches? Shit. Well, they're 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 like a $2 horse, you gotta wrap it for. We're out in Egypt here. Uh, it's okay. I mean, Ooh, oh, and Jimmy comes off of it with a clothesline there. Keep your eye on the ball, Chicho. Nice oh. suplex there. It's a spinning yeah. leg drop for Matt. There you go. Oh, this is low. Ooh, nice. In the jackhammer, nice. Execute, I'm sorry, one. Two, no, and Matt kicks out again. Oh, no. oh, did you see He's that? Done. He's done. One, one. That's over. two, oh, oh my God. Good Lord. Hey, well, you know what? Hey. 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 Yeah. How'd you get here? <laughs> and there it is, there the Peruvian cutter. Yeah. One, the two, the three. One, two, two. no, two my count. God. What is it going to take to put James Weevil away Wait here? Minute. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, come, come on, come on, dude. Come on. What are you doing? That's a, oh, that's no. a disqualification. What? Come on. James Weevil's name is all over this, and what the hell is Fletch doing? Again, he is not for EBW. 
AEW and really, I guess not for XCW either. I think it's more for he's not the We're picking back, like you said. Uh, James Rebrill uh, throwing Matt Chencho into the corner and hurting Matt. It was just a random thing. Like, I don't think it was particularly planned. It wasn't, no. It just. But boy, was it good. And you, you said, like, back then, like, James Rebrill being one of the most dedicated and, like, bleeding. Like, if there was somebody that had a chance to bleed EBW more than Chris Jones or Gabe, it was James Cerebral. Like, I don't know when I seen him without that EBW shirt on. When we it's originally, like seeing him now without a James Cerebral hat. hat. It's, it's, originally, it's interesting, when we originally discussed this, it was at your grandma's house, your dad's house, whoever's house you want to call it, we were playing basketball or something, you had called me over to your house, your apartment, and we were talking about it, and Gabe was there. You're like, hey, I got the CPW idea. Like, who do you think, who would you want for, like, the first member of EBW? And, like, I believe we instantly all agree, James Cerebral. Like, he was the first pick for the Untouchables, and he's the first pick for EBW. So, he was an integral part in this. Oh, God, yeah. And he was one of the people that... When we did the special finish for Summer Mania, he was one of the people that believed EBW had won. Like, he was fucking shocked. <laughs> yeah, it was. Third match on the card, we had two XCW veterans. One of them EBW at this time. We had Mr. 187 Genocide going one-on-one with Tommy the Man Merriman. Tommy getting one over on Genocide here. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, you know, like... XCW needed to get back into the fight a little bit on yes. an EBW show. EBW ran through XCW in the very first uh, in Outrage. So it's like it's time for XCW to have a little bit of comeuppance um, and be able to come into EBW's territory. And, and, and even if you haven't seen these shows, you'll even see where XCW and EBW were filmed in two completely different locations. I mean, yep. we made everything seem as different as possible. EBW had a different setup for the stage. Had a different location, XCW from what XCW did every week. So we wanted it to feel like a completely different show, a completely different, you know, expectation and uh, the, the presentation. And um, but we also wanted like we wanted XCW to not look completely shut down. Yes. So. Genocide obviously is an established superstar and like taking losses in even today in 2021-22 he doesn't have to take I mean he, him taking a loss does not nothing to him it doesn't hurt his career at it's all it's the excellence of sex execution especially when you're going against somebody who's as big as a star as Tommy the Man oh, yeah. so like it just made the most sense. You put two of your aces in their places, and the, the match can go either way. So, And like we said, Tommy obviously going over on top against Genocide. And it got fun at the end of the show because we had EBW versus EBW. So. Next up, some might say the match of the show. I'm just kidding. Nobody says that. But it was one of the most entertaining matches of the show because it was XCW veteran. What's that about? Eternal Darkness going one-on-one with EBW's first ever Hall of Famer, The Gabe. And The Gabe would lay the smack down on Eternal Darkness. And he'd walk in convincing back. fashion, And too. walk his ass dry. Gabe, <laughs> all nothing but hair and singlet. Boy, oh he, uh, took, he, he took Eternal Darkness to task. You guys should have picked up Eternal Darkness in EBW. Yeah, I'm good. It would have been a great addition. I don't think so. I bet you could have had some killer promos with him, too. <laughs> but, um... Oh, man. Nah, hey, if, if Gabe's going to beat anybody, why not Eternal Darkness, right? Why not, a, why not a seasoned vet, a man who wrestled in the very first match in XCW history? That why, Eternal Darkness. Why not a man that everybody else has beat on the roster? Right. Why not a man that has defeated Hazard... And side court, Summer Mania 2 for the XCW Power title. That's right. Why yeah. not? Let's let's give Gabe, <laughs> let, let's make Gabe an even bigger superstar than he already was. Nothing but uh, hair and singlet. 
Yeah, and uh, you're gonna pop up some of that footage. Right here. Go hard! What the fuck? <laughs> Scully likes to see a little stuff there. Bell and this match is underway. Oh, oh, come on! This is how you do a club, Hazard. Hey, look, he's got a little bit of a nip. Nice! And Reverse choke slam there. there. Oh! Oh! That's cool! No. No. One, One, two, two three! three. Really? Woo! Undefeated, baby! As if his ego wasn't big enough, let's see how he reacts at Summer Mania whenever he goes up against the real opponent. Hilarious, Gabe will defeat, Gabe really, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking, Gabe really does defeat a turnabout. And he really is hairy and wears a singlet as you see in the video. And so. Gabe getting a little bit of exercise in the match, running around the ring, jogging. One of the best ideas you ever had. I suppose. Semi-main event. Mr. Neutral. This is bad. None other than the Fletch. Going one-on-one -on -one with the Solution. Ryan Grayson. So this is a fun match because technically Ryan Grayson was representing EVW. You also won, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Grayson was representing EVW at the time against his will. So that's fun. And then you have me who's not playing either side, and I'm just in a bad mood. I mean, the whole thing with Matt and everything, I'm just in a bad mood. So I'm out there, and I... In real life, myself and Ryan Grayson are first cousins. Um, but you put us in the ring and we have zero chemistry. Zero. Zilch. We cannot work. I mean, I've worked with people like Stevie Goble and put on a five-star match. But for some reason, myself and Ryan Grayson in the ring just was like, it was oil and water. It was just bad. And I'm sorry it had to be EBW that felt that wrath. And at least you won. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at least, at least that. At least I won. But, uh, you know, Fletch, like we said, defeating Ryan Grayson, and not, not quite so good a match as you have alluded to. I had a lot in that era. Um, Summer Mania 11, the following year, I wrestled Swap Man in the pre-show. I had a bad couple of years. That was one of the best matches that I actually Oh, my played. God. What book, a shit storm. Book Swap Man. I'm all about entertainment, like... I could go out, I can watch, you know, fucking, like, you know, all the Chris Jones Fletches, all the Tommies and whoever's and Ryan's and the Hazards and Brogan's and everything like that, but you book me a good entertainment angle, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm content. Going in to the main event. I'm gonna set... It's gonna hurt the star rating, just have me and Ryan Grayson on the damn show. I mean, bet you're a Hall of Famer. Uh-huh. So, I mean, so is Ron Grayson. Is he? Yeah. You're a two-time Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yeah, you're the only two-time Hall of Famer. I am. And now Gabe is. Yeah. You and Gabe. Me and Gabe. Shelfly too. So, this match, I will just describe it at first. It is myself, the EBW champion, going one-on-one -on -one with Austin Chaos, which was pole vaulted. From the previous CBW show, Outrage, by defeating Tommy the Man Merriman. Probably one of the reasons why it was Austin kind of that faced me instead of Tommy. But also, you know, EBW's biggest show, why not have two of the biggest EBW stars wrestling against each other? Well, the reason, the original reason was, is we were going to have Austin win the EBW championship yeah. so that he could go one-on-one -on -one with Genocide at Summer Mania for Mr. Summer Mania Cup with the EBW title on the line. And the reason that didn't happen is there was some miscommunication. So before the match, me and Austin are changing in the dressing room. It's not really the dressing room. Me and Austin's changing in the back in the house. And uh, we told Corey Lee, you know, go find out who's winning. He comes back and says, Chris is going to go over. I'm like, well, I thought Austin was supposed to win. He's like, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to go over. So we go into this match. False count anywhere. We wrestle... Throughout the yard, we wrestle, get thrown into a satellite, satellite. <laughs> cars, go through the house, you Went know. Through a table, got swirly. The got table. Puke mop. I'm still irritated. I know you're going to watch this, Austin. I'm still irritated about the table. Let me explain the table spot to you. <laughs> <coughs> At least so, it wasn't like 
box and you guys hit the fucking yeah. shit later. So we had uh, a few exclusive spots pre planned, which is kind of what most matches are. You got a few exclusive spots pre planned, and I was pretty much going to take everything this whole match. The one thing Austin was supposed to take was this table. He was taking the table and the shower spot that we did in the pie. So, you know, we do the bathroom spot, he gives me the swirly, I throw him in, kind of throw him in the shower, hits me with the puke mop, we go out there, I set the table, and I'm getting ready to, you know, I got the table set up and I'm standing, I get ready to turn around to grab Austin because I was going to suplex to the table. So I fucking, like I said, set the table up, and then fucking Austin kicks me right in the dick, fucking hard, like, he <laughs> kicks me in the dick, like, like he probably didn't intentionally, like, it fucking hurt, like, the last time I got dropped like that in a match was probably when Cynical punched me in the balls in 2004. Because Cynical has a habit of just leaning up and just... Right in the fucking ball. Like Kyle Victim. So fuck. He lifted me like two inches off the ground with that foot. And I dropped. I'm like... Like I couldn't do anything. So he picked me up for this. I'm surprised he could get me off the ground. But he suplexed me through the drywall. That didn't feel good. It fucking hurt because it hit the wood. The foyer. And we worked our way into the kitchen. <coughs> And the pie, the thing that everybody talks about in this match, there's more stuff besides the pie. There's tacos, there's pie. So I made a pie. Old cell phones? Yeah, I made a pie, and I put it in the freezer when we got to start shooting for Backyard Bash, and I took it out right before the match. Like, it hadn't been in the freezer for more than an hour or so, and it just whipped cream. So you know, I put it in the fridge. We go we work away to the kitchen, we do our spot, and I grab the pie, and I'm like, yeah, you like those bitches pie, and, and all you hear is, <laughs> sounding like a fucking rock. And I guess it's kind of payback for the fucking kick of the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> then you threw him in bed with a fat naked guy. Yeah, so, work our way to the bedroom, I hit him with the laptop, and I think a Bible, and then my roommate at the time, uh, he was working night shift, he had to work that night, so he was asleep at that point, but... He sleeps completely naked, pretty much. Like, occasionally he got the boxers on. So I threw Austin into the bed with him. I knew he, I knew the roommate wouldn't wake up. <laughs> we work our way out to the porch. By the way, you know, special guest referee, Juggs. Juggs was the referee for this match. You know, standing the whole time, all the time counting, one! Mindy with her mom two. voice, one! Two! Never, never getting all the way down to count. Always standing up and counting. She never got down and hit the mat at all. Work our way to the porch, you know, do the Illuminati. Austin drops me on my head, about died. Work our way back out to the mats, and in, in this fucking the ending of this match, like you could tell something wasn't right, because like we did the spot where I think we we did each other's finishers, and Austin was he was supposed to kick out and he didn't, so already like the referees confused. the referees confused, like you can kind of tell on my face I'm confused I'm not, but obviously you got to play it off. Like, you tell your referees all the time. Count three. Count three. If they don't kick out, they don't kick out. Like, if we did the uh, Extreme King spot this year of Brogan and, and Corey Lee, like, if Brogan would have got eliminated and not won Extreme King, like, we would have went with whoever won. We would have figured it out from there. Yeah. But, you know, ultimately I would end up retaining the EBW Championship in this match, defeating Austin, a match that I felt was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely the match of the show, too. And uh, it would lead to several things, as you said, you know, Austin, Mr. Sarmani, a couple of genocide. Yeah, we just ended up, the UBW title just kind of went away, and we just stopped using it entirely instead of what we originally planned was, you know, we were going to have Mr. Sarmani a couple, which also would have retained at Sarmani, yeah. and it would have went away anyway, but, like... My original plan was Austin will be Mr. Summer Mania and he'd already be EBW champion. And then once, you know, all the EBW people lost their jobs and XCW took back over, Austin would have um, a reasonable reason to stay within the company because he won a title. And anyone who was holding a title at XCW got their job. Right. right. So, like, that was kind of our ploy of how we were going to keep Austin Chaos in the show was by by having that scenario. And at that point... In time, I believe Cerebral was champ. Yeah, yeah, I think so. At that point in time, we have pretty much, behind the scenes, agreed that Austin back then was going to be the equivalent of what Brogan is now, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. 
Austin was going to be that top guy, that top star. Yeah, I mean, Brogan and Brady are our top guys yeah. now, and Austin and Matt were the equivalent to that. Then. Excellent mic skills. He, he could do everything. Like, obviously, he didn't do too much in the death match with me and Hazard. But, like, even when Austin was gone, he had the abilities to do. I can't fucking remember the name of it right. Canadian National TV? Oh, CNN, uh, CNN is Can- uh, Canadian News Network. Canadian News Network. And he, t- he did all, like, it was entertaining. Like, I say, I watch all those awesome wrestling matches. You give me a fucking entertaining segment. And, like, Chris Jones and Austin Chaos with the light up glasses when those debuted? Fucking amazing. Yeah, the Canadian Revelation. We never got to do it. Well, it's one. Of, that's what we need to do. No false episode on some things that were supposed to be but never were. I believe that could be a good episode. Yeah, Chris Jones in the VK two. Chris Jones VK two. You know, Canadian Revelation, Fletcher's Nemesis. That still pisses me off. That's the one thing you didn't book right ever. Give it to fucking Josh Clarkson. You should, you should fire yourself. <laughs> Going into the end of the show. I tried to kind of give it to Void after, yeah. and it didn't work for him either. So. Yeah. How, how are you going to How are you going to pretend like a dude that's six two weighs four hundred pounds and bully in yeah. like school? So whatever. Going into the show, <laughs> the show being <laughs> the end all be all for EBW shows. Obviously, we said Backyard Bash is the equivalent of XCW Summer Mania. Be Dave Meltzer. What do you say? I'm going to say um, three and a half. Yeah, this one isn't as good as Outrage. Um, yeah, I would probably give it a three and a half. You said, uh, you alluded to that. You didn't quite enjoy your match with Ryan Grayson too no, much. the shits. So as we close out this episode, no falls. And then we had, I mean, we had Gabe and Eternal Nerd in the part, too. Well... You give me an entertaining segment, and I'm fucking happy. So, Gabe, Fletch, EBW Hall of Fame now. We're going to, essentially, I believe that wraps up everything we can do about EBW for now. Who knows about a future No False episode or something down the road. But, uh, join us next time for episode 7. Too many thoughts in my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. Killing the game, and I gotta go ask anybody they all heard about it. They know when they kid and he's spitting, they know when he get in it. I like do whatever I say, cause I can go put you on blast People been mad at me cause I don't follow them back I'm laughing cause that is so hard Why they all trying to act like they been bossing When really their bosses been bossing them up Nobody ever been telling me what I would do When I keep in the cash for the shit out of luck, hey It's funny how it goes, funny how it goes Talking about shit, they don't even know Why they trying to tell me about what I should do Chasing dreams. This ain't overnight. This ain't overnight.